we glorify you. Uh, we magnify you tonight, God, uh, for we are not confused by why we came tonight. Uh, we came to worship you, uh, and it is to you and you alone, God, uh, that we pray. Uh, for God, you have told us that we can have confidence uh, that if we ask anything uh, according to your will, God, that you hear us. Uh, hear us tonight, oh God, uh, and we thank you tonight that you're going to hear and answer prayer. And God, we forever thank you for your word is forever settled in heaven. And everybody shouted amen and amen. If you believe what you prayed tonight, I want you to give him one more hand clap of praise as we begin to dig into this. As we begin to dig into prayer tonight, that's where I'm headed. Let me begin by saying that there is absolutely no way that you can become a praying person and not go into another dimension in your faith and your walk with God. I'm going to go slow tonight. I don't have any time restriction. Now, it is possible... It's very possible for you to become so flooded with excitement about praise that you fall in love with praise and you forget who it is that you're praising. Matter of fact, if you'll, if you'll study it out, you will find out that it was Lucifer who was the praise and worship leader in heaven. And he became confused on the concepts of worship and thought that it was his glory and not God's glory. Sometimes in the throes of worship, we get so caught up into how we got up that we forget the purpose for which we have gone up. And we ascend into the presence of God and we make the same mistake that Satan made. And we get there and we say, I will be exalted above the Most High. But it's very, very difficult to do that when you're praying. Because with prayer, prayer requires humility. It requires humbling yourself before God. It requires submitting yourself before God. It requires opening up your heart and, and admitting that you don't know everything, that you don't have everything, that you can't fix everything, that you can't do everything. It's a very powerful thing to know that we can have an audience with God Almighty. It's just mind-shaking. To really just stop, I, th I think because we've been churched for so long that we really don't grasp the concept that we can go to God, the creator of all things, a God who is so great and majestic and who is so mighty that when he speaks, worlds just leap into being. A God that when he utters his voice, that kingdoms will fall. A God who stepped out on absolutely nothing, cleared his throat, <clears throat> spoke what he thought, and it became what he said at the dictates of the Master. That's the God that we can have an audience with, and I can go to him in prayer. And I'm going to tell you something. If you, don't, if you don't ever stop and just think about how infinite he is and how finite that we are, just to know that God alone would allow us to speak to him, it's just absolutely mind-boggling, and you need to know that. If you don't know that you can have an audience with God, uh, you won't enjoy prayer. And I'm saddened to say that we have raised a generation of people who enjoy going to church but don't enjoy prayer. It's quiet. They enjoy preaching but they don't enjoy prayer. They're down with the music. 
They love the music, but they're not down with prayer. And if you don't understand to have an audience with an absolute God who beside him there is no other. I'm getting ready to feel the preach coming on right now. To know that I can have an audience with him, it, it, it shakes my mind to know why nobody wants to really pray. Because really when you call most people to, and church folks to prayer and you ask them to come to the altar, uh, they'll, they'll come and they'll, they'll, they'll kneel down for about three or four minutes. And then they start complaining about their knees hurting or their back hurting or they start looking around and they want to see if they're the only ones left. And they start wandering back to their seats, which is indicative of the fact that they do not pray often. Because they quickly run out of things to say to God. But those same people will walk out the double doors and they'll hang out after church and talk for hours. They, they'll, 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 they'll be late for work in the morning because they, they got caught up on a conversation but not one time have they ever been late for work because they were lost in the power of prayer. And you have to know that if you're going to be effective in prayer, that you have to know without a shadow of a doubt uh, that you can have an audience uh, with God. Now, we, we, we're, we're, going, we're going slow tonight, and some of you, you're looking at me like a cow staring at a new cake, so I'll just, uh, I'll just go slow. Uh, let me just ask you a question because ain't nobody here but me and you tonight. Uh, how many people in here, you just, uh, let me see your phone. How many of you, you just, you just grab your cell phone. It ain't ringing. I ain't calling nobody. Nobody's on the other line. You just pick up your cell phone. You put it next to your face. And you start talking. Does anybody do that? I mean, you just, you're, you're stressed out, you're overwhelmed, you're, people have gotten on your nerves. Y'all act like people don't ever get on your nerves. I mean, we're going to be real here, we're going to be superficial. I mean, people get on my nerves. And I'll tell them about it. All right? So, so people have gotten on your nerves and you just need to vent. You need to let it out. So you just grab hold of your cell phone, ain't nobody on the other line, but you just grab hold of it, put it to your face, and you start talking. Hopefully none of you do that. And the reason that you don't do that is, is because nobody is on the other end of the line. And conversation is not as exciting when it is one-dimensional. But when somebody else is on the other end, it motivates you to communicate and people who do not pray effectively do not pray because they are not aware of the fact that God is on the other end of the line and God said in order for you to be effective in prayer you have to know that whenever you pick up the phone I'm listening before the conversation even begins I'm listening regardless whether you're right or wrong whether you're weak or strong I'm listening whether, whether I gotta straighten you out or, or correct you I, I'm still listening. Uh, you need to go back to that old song we sang in Sunday school that I can go to God in prayer. That's a good place to shout right there. And this, your Bible says, is the confidence that we have in Him that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us be able to know that we can have an audience with God. And this is the confidence. Now that word confidence comes from a Greek word that means to be outspoken. God said, I want you to be outspoken in your prayer life. I want you to be bold about it. 
I want you to be radical about it. I, I don't want you to be timid. I don't want you to be wishy-washy. He said, I want you to have confidence uh, that you can have uh, my attention uh, because as you develop confidence uh, in your prayer life, uh, other people is going to be able to notice that. You know, those people that laugh at you, the people that tell you that you're spending too much time at church, the ones that call you a, a fanatical. Those that call you a, a Jesus freak. Those that are telling you that you've lost your mind. They will notice that there's something, there's some kind of confidence in your prayer. And whenever they are going through something, they'll, they'll sneak over there to you and say, Hey, I'm going through something. Will you remember me in prayer? That's the kind of confidence uh, that I'm talking about tonight. Uh, but you have to first of all know that you can get in touch with God uh, anywhere, anytime, day or night, uh, any place. He said, I'm there. If I have access uh, to the gates of hell, oh, David said, if I make my bed in hell, he said, you're going to be there. Jonah caught him in the belly of a well with seaweed and fish guts wrapped around his neck. But God heard his prayer. You need to know that wherever you are, whether it's in the bed, if it's in the shower, in the car, the altar, or in your cubicle, God will hear you when you pray. Can somebody help me preach tonight? You need to know that God is on the other side of the line. This is the confidence that we have in Him. That if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. If we ask anything according to His will. Now this is what separates me from televangelists because they just want to tell you that if you ask anything God hears you and that's not what your Bible says your Bible says that if we ask anything according to his will then he hears us so you need to understand tonight that to pray his will is to pray his word for this Bible the Word of God reveals His will in your life. Had somebody not too long ago in a church service, they wanted a word. I don't know what it is about the new millennium. Everybody wants a word. Preacher, can you give me a word? I said, I sure can. Hold on just one minute. Here's 1,166 pages of word straight from heaven. You don't have to worry about a man missing it. God himself wrote this. He said it's inspired. God breathed this word. And to pray his word is to pray his will. And there is no will of God that is in contradiction to his word. For the word of God is the will of God explained. So when you start praying the will of God, you will notice that you're praying the Word of God. You want your prayer life to be lined up with the will of God so then you can walk into the throne room of God with confidence and say, God, I have aligned my prayers to your will because this is what the book says, that I can ask anything according to your will. You see, because what we've been taught is that we can just ask any old thing. And if we could just ask anything, it would take you into a land of manipulation and witchcraft. It would take you into mind control and, and positive thinking. It would take you out into some mental euphoria where you could just uh, uh, think or covet something and expect God to give it to you. So praying God's will prohibits you from praying effectively to get somebody else's spouse. It, 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 it stops you from praying effectively to get somebody else's house or their car or for God to kill somebody. 
it's quiet in here. I, I, I've, I've heard people, I don't, I don't like him. I wish God would just take him out. I have. I better watch what I say because I know this is going out on the WSW. Not that I've ever cared. But I was talking to a preacher the other day pastor and he told me this was his words he said he said yeah I've got a few people in in my church that's giving me problems so you know what I started praying God kill them I said are you kidding he said no I pray God kill them and I said well you know that God's really not going to hear or answer that prayer because that's not according to his will and may I tell you something, that if it is not according to his will, God will tell you, I'm not hearing it. And this is the confidence that we have in him. And we having the confidence is just as important as the asking itself. The, the, the confidence is what opens up the audience of God because it is the confidence uh, that we have in Him uh, that expresses our faith uh, to know that I can come boldly into the throne room of God uh, and obtain mercy and find grace uh, in the time of need. Uh, God said you can't receive anything from me uh, if you waver, but you better come in here knowing that you're my son, uh, you're my daughter, and you have the right uh, to walk into my house. Uh, and if I need to see you walking. I need to see you walking with confidence into my throne room knowing that I prayed your will and I've got confidence that when I pray you will hear my cry. Then he said and ask. When you ask the word ask I was just sitting back thinking that that's a praise in itself. Just asking is a praise. Because to ask God, you are praising Him because you have told Him that, God, I've already looked you over. And I know whether or not you do it, it's up to you. But I know that you've got the answer. Reminds me of the three Hebrew children. They said, they said we will not bow to Nebuchadnezzar's image. He said, and we're going to throw you in the fiery furnace. And those Hebrew boys didn't start shaking. This is what they said. You can throw us in the, in the fire if you want to, but I serve a God that is able to deliver me from the fire. I don't know whether or not he's going to do it, but this one thing I know, my God is more than able. I wish somebody in here would would get excited to know that God uh, is able to do exceeding uh, abundantly more than you could ever ask or think according to his will the word according it's a musical term it's like a chord it means to be connected to be in harmony with one thing I can't stand is hearing People sing out of harmony. It drives me crazy. But to be in perfect harmony, there's just something about kicking back and listening to that. It just sounds good. And when we pray God's word and pray his will, we praying according uh, in harmony to his will. That means that we are in perfect harmony with the will of God uh, in our life. Uh, and it is a pleasing sound uh, to the ears of Almighty God. Uh, now there's several different ways that we can be in harmony and pray uh, to God. Uh, some of you may pray on your knees. Uh, some of you may just bow your head. Uh, some of you may be real quiet and reserved. Uh, you may look up and pray. Uh, I like to walk and pray. I'll get home and I'll, I'll tell Kim to go to Walmart for, for three or four hours and I'll, I'll start walking the floors of the living room and I'll start praying as loud as I'm preaching. I'll start sweating, but I have a Holy Ghost time. I'm praying and I feel the presence of the Lord. You can even whisper a prayer. Nobody ought to tell you how to pray. You need to pray within the constraints of your own personality. You ought to be able to pray without anybody coming along, tapping you on the shoulder and saying, no, 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 hold on a minute. 
you're not praying the right way. Now, you can meet me outside at the CD table and you can, you can straighten me out on the way I preach. Maybe I don't need to talk as loud. Maybe I don't need to walk around as much. You can straighten me out, but when it comes to praying, Jack, you might as well leave me alone. And what is so amazing about prayer and what's so amazing about God is, is to not how I speak it, not how I have an orientation of my words, but it's just how he hears it. Because he said, my ear is not too heavy that I cannot hear. He said, I'm not deaf. There's nothing restricting me from being able to hear. My arm is not so short uh, that I can't reach. Uh, and he said, my God, I feel like preaching. Uh, he said, no matter where you're at, uh, he said, whenever you pray according uh, to my will, he said, I'm going to hear and answer your prayer. And my God, if you knew how good God uh, could hear, it would blow your mind. If we really knew how good God could hear, it would stop us from arguing about stuff like prayer back in school. I've had enough conversations about, will you sign this petition? We need to get prayer back in school. Will you sign it? You're an evangelist. Will you sign it? And my answer is, no. I'm not signing that. And I'm going to tell you why. How can a bunch of senators uh, take prayer out of anything? Uh, my God, you can't tell me when I can pray uh, and when I can't pray. Uh, you can sew my lips together and you can't stop me from praying. Uh, I don't have to go to a bunch of drunk, uh, ungodly senators uh, to get their permission uh, whether or not.